So this is my view of what I think the um, PV module manufacturing space will look like in 2009 and beyond. Some of this is from analyst reports, some of it is from green tech. Up until today, we had an oversupply, and today, or oh, supply constraint, and today we have an oversupply. It's going to create fierce competition. The differentiator is in your cell. It's not in the PV module itself. That's the commodity. The price is going to continue to drop. You need to bring scale. You got to have a superior cost structure. At the end of the day, just like you say in real estate, location, location, location. In the solar space, it's price, 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 and there's nothing more than price. I was talking to a friend of mine who works, who's a country manager for Sun Edison, a big utility company based in Florida. And I asked him, I said, so how do you go about picking these suppliers for wind and power? And he said, Shami, he says, one of the things, one of the most important things we look for is the financial stability of these suppliers. If we have to warrant our product for 25 years, I want to make sure that those guys are around. So the message here is you need to have a strong balance sheet. You may have great technology. Invest your cash wisely. If it is not your IP, outsource. So why does world-class companies like HP outsource to super-tier EMS companies? EMS companies historically have been a low-margin business. The way the EMS model works, and I think it's the only way the EMS model works, is when you look at Wall Street, Wall Street looks at EMS companies and OEMs alike. They look for a return on invested capital. OEM companies historically have a high gross margin, and they have a lower return on assets, but they drive to an ROIC target. EMS companies, on the other hand, have a lower gross margin, but they have a high return on assets. So they know how to manage cost, they know how to manage inventory, which is cash tied up for them. So large companies like HP says, how do we optimize this model? We drive a high gross margin because they have to continually invest in R&D. Let's go to an EMS company that already has the infrastructure in place. They understand how to take out cost. They understand how to manage assets. It's all about asset velocity. That's how you optimize the solution. So companies like HP have understood this a long time ago. They initially put up their own brick and mortar. They paid the tuition, and they have come to realize that, look, we need to go to an EMS provider. Our business is product technology, brand management, and getting our products to the market. Let companies like Flextronics and like Foxconn and all these other guys out there go worry about the logistics, the heavy lifting, the ERP system to get our products to market. Here's an example of how you could leverage or how the electronics industry has leveraged the, or the OEMs have leveraged the electronic manufacturing industry in the cell phone business. In 2005, 24% of the bomb was managed by the electronic manufacturing industry. The rest of it was managed by the OEM. Cost was key here, it was becoming a commoditized product. The EMS companies continued to invest on behalf of the OEMs. They started adding vertical capabilities. They started building their own antennas. They started building their own plastics. They started building their own LCDs. The message here is they were able to grind out cost now they manage a larger portion of that costed bomb. Here's an example of how complex these supply chains are that they manage. They have distribution location in all these different geographies. They have vertical capabilities in multiple countries in the same geography. They have logistics and distribution. When you buy a printer from HP, as soon as you place the order for the printer, it goes to an EMS company, they manage the manufacturing and the distribution of that product. They get the product to the end customer. So how do they do it? So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with electronic manufacturing services. The super tier one guys have what they call a concept called the super campuses. These are campuses where they have 70,000 people on site. They have suppliers co-located on sites. They have all of the verticals in place. What this does is it eliminates lead time. It reduces your packaging cost. It reduces your freight cost. It continues to take out cost out of the system. 
These are examples of the investments that EMS companies have made over time to reduce cost on behalf of customers. So managing the supply chain is sophisticated technology. So they are centralized versus decentralized systems. You need to understand your end demand variability, time to market, supply chain locations, duties, currency shift, cultural issues. These are the complexities one has to deal with that EMS companies already have in place. Again, a lot of this is sophisticated ERP systems, knowing the different cultures, creating a management team that understands operating within that country. And so the question for you guys to think about is, do we want to go recreate all of this when it already exists? We talk about growth in solar. And I think it was from Green Tech or from Barclays Bank, I saw a comment that said, if First Solar was able to execute to 12% efficiency and SunPower was able to lower the cost by 50%, what does that do for the industry? So can super tier one EMS companies offer end-to-end -end services for the PV module guys? I think they can. Many of these EMS companies today build the inverters, build the junction boxes, have the capabilities of building the um, PV module itself. You could source the cells, you could consign the cells to them, they could take those cells and turn them into a PV module. It's all about scale. It's how much volume you drive through those plants will help you lower your cost. So there is opportunities here for you guys to go explore, to take advantage of. It comes back to, I think, what John said, do you want to invest in the brick and mortar? EMS companies just in the last year added about 4 million square feet. They hired 25,000 people. Now they hire people. They right-size the organization, products move from geography to geography, they understand how to manage this for you. In summary, it's easy for anybody to build a high-cost, low-efficiency panel. It takes a little bit of cash. Focus on your core competency. Cash is king. Focus on next practices and not best practices. So the messaging here is there's a lot of infrastructure, there's a lot of capability out there. You guys need to go explore and take advantage of that and invest your cash wisely. Thank you.